Hello and welcome to Spectrum User 12. I am Uyai Anyakan, coming to you live from the beautiful hills of Ibiakuran. Let's take a look at the headlines. Patrick government says Abuja Kaduna train will not run till all kidnapped victims are free. Chairman Taft Media Group Tony Afia announces birth of new it dialect is my great speaking pleasure. radio, thanks to your 102.7 FM. Plus, China sets military drills close to Taiwan Island after Pelosi's visit. We'll bring you details of the stories and more in a moment. In our news today, the report that the federal government has confirmed that it approved the purchase of vehicles worth 1.4 billion naira for neighboring Niger Republic to tackle insecurity. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, gave the confirmation explaining that providing intervention to the neighboring Niger Republic is not new and it is the prerogative of President Mohamed Bahari who approved the purchase. The minister, who was speaking after the Federal Executive Council FEC meeting presided over by the president, added that the financial support, which is primarily for the, pur the purpose of enhancing capacity to protect their territory based on a request by the Nigerian government, is also in the best interest of the country. In the meantime, the federal government has said the Abuja Kaduna rail line will not resume until all those kidnapped by bandits in March are rescued and united with their families. The Minister of Transportation, Moat Sambo, who disclosed this during an inspection visit to the Idu and Kuba train stations in Abuja, said the federal government is deploying advanced technologies to rail services across the country to forestall similar security breaches. Recall that an Abuja Kaduna train was attacked on March 28th leading to deaths and the abductions of more than 60 passengers. Although 37 victims have been released, about 35 passengers remain in the captivity of the bandits. We move now to the legislature where the leadership of the Senate is meeting with the service chiefs over the security crisis in the country. Reports say the bipartisan closed door meeting with the service chiefs is aimed at reviewing the current security strategies and discuss new solutions. Speaking at the commencement of the meeting, Senate President Ahmed Lawan said the security challenges have lingered and the situation is frightening, adding that there is nowhere to hide or go. He stressed that it is there at this time to come up with an effective solution as the crisis is dislocating where the head of government is situated. Responding, the Chief of Defense Staff General Lockheed Urab, who said a lot is being done to improve security emphasize that the troops are still committed to the courts, adding that no one is leaving any stone unturned in addressing the problem. Present at the meeting are the Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, Chief, Chief of Air Staff, DG, DSS, and a representative of the National Security Advisor. A meeting at our instance as body of principal officers of the Senate. And um, there will be two segments to this meeting. The first is what we are going through now. Uh, DJ and I, uh, I should have seen you. Maybe I was misled by the, by the MC. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, the first segment is this segment, which is an open segment, where we make remarks of general nature why this meeting is holding today. And the second segment is the segment that will be uh, a closed session where our media friends will excuse us. Still on insecurity, the Nigeria Railway Corporation, NRC, 
has suspended the train services on the Lagos and Jakuta and Abuja routes over safety concerns. The managing director of the NRC, Fidet Okiria, confirmed this to journalists, saying it is important following a report of an attempted kidnapping of passengers that left the Jakuta station by road on their way to Abuja. According to him, the passengers and their vehicles were shot at in the process, but he said they escaped from the attackers. Okiria explained that the passengers have been advised to use any of the adjacent stations in Itakwe North or Itobo South until the security situations in the area improves. In a related development, the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, has threatened to impose a higher sanction on cable televisions over films on banditry and terrorism. Trust TV has announced the receipt of a government memo ordering the payment of 5 million naira fine, which is a penalty for the airing of a documentary titled Nigeria's Banditry, The Inside Story, in March 2022. The NBC letter signed by the Director General Balarabe Shehu said the Media Trust Limited arm flouted the broadcasting code adding that the airing of BBC Africa I film, The Bandit Warlords of Zamfara, promoted the activities of bandits and undermined national security. Reports say Multi-Choice Nigeria Limited, owners of DSTV, NTS Star Times Limited, and Telecom Satellite Limited, TSTV, are also to pay 5 million naira each. Meanwhile, as part of its preparations for the 2023 general election, the police have announced plans to offer a nationwide training to its officers and men on election security management through a workshop to be done in collaboration with experts and other security agencies. As part of the IG's reform and upgrade agenda to strengthen and build the capacity of the police, particularly as the country heads into an important election year, Inspector General of Police Usman Al Khalibaba said the leadership of the police has kick started targeted and specialized efforts to enhance the capacity of its officers to meet the force's obligations in the national interagency quest of ensuring a fair, peaceful, secure, and credible electoral process next year. The IGP noted that the election security management workshop slated for next month would feature sessions led by legal and security experts, including top officers of the armed forces, to provide lessons on the legal and security framework guiding the roles and actions of the police and how to facilitate and maintain an interagency collaboration, including with the media, to ensure a heat-free election exercise. We move now to the judiciary where Justice Daniel Osiago of the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has fixed Friday for a further hearing of a suit by an aspirant up to Karim Shitu against the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and one other. Shitu, who aspires to represent Ikorodu in the Federal House of Representatives, also joined Awesu Abdulaziz as a respondent in the seat. The plaintiff is praying the court for an order to restrain INEC from accepting or continuing to retain the name of the third respondent, Awesu Abdulaziz, as the PDP's candidate for Ikorodu Federal Constituency in its database. Shitu is also praying the court to declare the nomination of Awesu Abdulaziz as the PDP candidate was not in line with the party's constitution. Corporate Communications Department of NIPOS, Franklin Alao, said the tripartite partnership would facilitate digital financial services, issuing of payment cards and support financial inclusion in the country. The agreement was signed by the Postmaster General and Chief Executive Officer of NIPOS, Dr. Ismaili Adebayo Adewusi, the Chief Executive Officer of eGate, Esam El Shege, and the Vice President of Global Digital Partnership for Visa. Alex Macrea. 
Back here, the chairman and CEO Chav Associates, Tony Afia, has announced the birth of the first privately owned dialect speaking radio station in a quiet boom state, Tangsio, 102.7 FM. Speaking of the reason behind the new radio station, Tony Afia disclosed that the purpose of Tangsio FM is to give a quiet boom people and the Aqua Cross region a sense of belonging to the media world keep them up to date with day-to-day -day happenings and enable the people communicate effectively in their different dialects. Speaking further, the chairman who thanked the government of Aquibum State, the staff, listeners and viewers of Planet Radio and Spectrum Television, as well as clients of the brand, reiterated its commitment to deliver quality content in line with best ethical and professional practices of the broadcast media. We now bring to you the special broadcast by our CEO, Tony Afia. It is my great pleasure to address you all, and I am particularly very pleased to be able to once again address those of you that have been with us from inception, as well as those of you who are new to the Planet Radio and Spectrum Television platforms. As an ardent listener and follower of the TAP Media Group, I am certain you have observed the frequent interruptions in our transmission and sometimes non-operation for some time now. This is as a result of the devastating damage caused by a massive thunder strike on our installations in the Spectrum TV, Planet Radio stations, and on our power generating plants. This happened a few months after the completion of the periodic reinforcement of our earthing system. We want to very sincerely and unreservedly tender our apologies for all the inconveniences and the quality infotainment you've missed due to the unfortunate lightning incident. The wise man said it is not how many times you fall but how courageous and determined you are to get up, dust yourself and move on. That matters. So we have left no stone unturned in our effort to return to full capacity transmission. The challenges we have faced in the past few weeks afforded us the time to reflect on the goodwill shown to us by our listeners, viewers, clients, and partners. So I convey here the sentiment of immense appreciation shared by the board, management, and staff of TAF Media Group to our esteemed listeners and viewers for your unwavering support, loyalty, and sustained patronage. You all are truly the reason for our existence. Our years of operating in a sector such as ours that is constantly and rapidly evolving is an achievement that we are particularly proud of. We are honored to be here and even more so to have done it on the back of our consistent, strong values of discipline and high quality service, all the while raising our profile and prominence in the industry. Extremes listeners and viewers, recall that Planet Radio came alive when people least expected it. When it did, well-meaning individuals in the state proposed that the vision of establishing the first privately owned and indigenous radio stations was a burden shared by many, but actualized first by TAF and Associate. In the same vein, and as part of our continued effort to get into closer contact with the people through our wider coverage of radio and programming, I announce to you the introduction and commencement of an entirely indigenous language radio station into the TAP Media Group brands, effective Monday, August 1st, 2022. For us at TAP Media Group, the emergence of Tangsio 102.7 FM, as the station is so called, is uh, particularly thrilled and momentous as it is aimed at catering for the information, education, and entertainment needs of the mass of our indigenous populace that hitherto have not been catered for with our English language broadcast on Planet Radio. Our objective is to build a profitable, sustainable, and contributing company for the enlightenment and development of our people. 
And we know that in order to achieve this, the happiness and satisfaction of our teaming listeners and viewers is the priority. Thanks you, 102.7 FM will be broadcast exclusively in Ibibio, Anang, Oro, and Efik languages. And in doing this, we will continue to uphold the best standards of professionalism in the conduct of our business, even as we will continue to push for more innovative ways of serving the people better. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to members of the board and the entire staff of TAF Media Group who have been doing their very best in their respective positions, especially to the engineering staff who are devoting their effort to ensuring smooth operations in spite of the challenging times. This for me is profound and indispensable for this new leap. Above all, I gratefully acknowledge the support and sustained patronage of the government of Aquaibom states, client and partners, and once again, the goodwill of our listeners and viewers. We hope and believe that Tangsio 102.7 will be of immense benefit to our people as it will help expand the space for social political engagement, entertainment, and the advancement of our dear state. Definitely, Tangsio will be a greater envy of our competition. Finally, TAF Media Group sincerely appreciates the good people of Ibiakuran for their unceasing support in ensuring that our assets are secured. May the Almighty God continue to bless TAF Media Group, Ibiakuran people, Akwaibom State, and the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We move to Africa now, where Senegal's opposition has called for the suspension of the publication of the results of Sunday's legislative elections to examine its complaints over alleged irregularities and fraud. Recall that both the government and opposition camps are claiming victory after Sunday's vote to renew the 165 seats in the National Assembly, which is largely controlled by the president. The polls, which is the last before presidential elections in 2024, were an important test for Thor after local elections in January saw the opposition win in major cities, including the capital Dakar, Zinkor in the south and Fez in the west. On the foreign scene, the United States U.S. Senate has voted to approve the accession of Finland and Sweden to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, with the resolution gaining the support of 95 senators. The single dissenting vote came from Republican Senator George Howley of Missouri, who argued that there should be less focus on security in Europe and much more on the threat from China. Recall that U.S. President Joe Biden has strongly supported the accession of Sweden and Finland to NATO and referred the matter to the Senate for consideration back in July. The vote in Washington followed a vote in France National Assembly early on Wednesday, in which 209 deputies voted in favor of Finnish and Swedish membership, while 46 voted against. Reports say before the accession rules can enter into force, Finland and Sweden must be ratified by all 30 NATO member states, two-thirds of which have already given their approval for the new members. In a separate development, UN Chief Antonio Guterres is advocating for oil and gas firms to pay special taxes. Speaking in New York, the UN Secretary General urged governments to mitigate the effects of a threefold crisis of access to food, energy and finance that is crushing the most vulnerable. Duterte is well blaming the crisis fueled by the war in Ukraine. The United Nations chief also named greed by energy companies as being responsible for hiking energy bills. He noted that it's immoral for oil and gas companies to be making record profit from the energy crises on the backs of the poorest people and communities and at a massive cost to the climate. Reports say the combined profits of the largest energy companies in the first quarter of this year are close to $100 billion. It is immoral for oil and gas companies 
to be making record profits from this energy crisis on the back of the poorest people and communities and at a massive cost to the climate. The combined profits of the largest energy companies in the first quarter of this year are close to 100 billion US dollars. I urge all governments to tax these excessive profits and use the funds to support the most vulnerable people through these difficult times. And I urge people everywhere to send a clear message to the fossil fuel industry and their financiers that this grotesque greed is punishing the poorest and most vulnerable people while destroying our only common home, the planet. And many developing countries uh, are drowning in debt without access to finance and struggling to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic and could go over the brink. We are already seeing the warning signs of a wave of economic, social and political upheaval that would, love, would leave no country untouched. Student foreign in China has given a preview of what might be coming for Taiwan by sending 27 warplanes into the island's air defense identification zone, a buffer of experts commonly referred to as an ADIS, according to Taiwan's defense ministry. The Chinese defense ministry released a map of six zones around the island where it plans to conduct air and sea exercises and long-range live fire exercises, in spite of what they described as a blockade warning ships and aircraft to stay out of the areas during the drills. Reports say the exercise areas announced by Beijing extend well into Taiwan's Addis and in some cases encroach on the island's territorial airspace, an area recognized by international law as extending 12 nautical miles from shore. Still to come in the news, Super Eagles to face Cristiano Ronaldo's Portugal in friendly. Do stay with us. knowledge of global businesses, economic activities, a new wave of a stock market, forex market, cryptocurrencies and NFTs create new dynamics towards emerging market millionaires and billionaires. From the dot-com era to the oil booms, the fundamental news drives the market. This is Business 360 taking you to the business around the globe. Join us from 11.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Weekdays, exclusive on Spectrum Television. Business 360, your prism to world businesses.
Thanks for staying tuned. On our business news, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, banks and organized private sector, OPS, has agreed to work together to create a more effective financing structure that ensures increased accessibility to funding by the real sector. This was part of highlights at the first National Stakeholders Conference organized yesterday in Lagos by the Association of Corporate Affairs Managers of Banks, ACAMB, in partnership with the Chartered Institution of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, and support from banks. Reports say while the details of the renewed collaboration would be worked on over time by a consultative committee drawn from stakeholders and experts across the device yesterday, they agreed on an enduring dollar to enhance funding and monitoring of the impact on the real sector. Deputy Director of Financial System Stability Directorate, Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Ebuagu Ezulu, said the many funding interventions of the Apex Bank were aimed at boosting the real sector as a driver of national economic growth. Meanwhile, the world's biggest oil producers have agreed to raise production slightly in a bid to help ease high prices. Non-members of oil producers group called Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, which includes Russia, agreed yesterday to add 100,000 more barrels per day to the market from September. Reports say the decision is a blow to leaders who had called for production to be ramped up, adding that the latest production output increase is at a much slower pace than in recent months. In health, the National Health Insurance Authority has said it has introduced a program called Drug Registered Hitchhiking Medicine Supply. The Director General of NHIA, Professor Mohamed Sambo, while briefing newsmen, said the program was to ensure the availability of drugs in the market and make them less expensive. He said the National Health Bill, which was assented to by President Muhammad Buhari, was a critical element of the nation's development. Recall that President Buhari had, on May 21st, signed the National Health Insurance Authority Bill of 2022 into law, with the new legislation repealing the National Health Insurance Scheme Act of 2004. Still in health, the Assistant General Manager in Formal Sector Department, National Health Insurance Authority, Dr. Sikiu Salawuddin, has said the national and state registers would be used to determine beneficiaries of the Vulnerable Group Fund. The Vulnerable Group Fund, created in the newly signed National Health Insurance Authority Act of 2022, is to help provide free health insurance for vulnerable Nigerians. Salawuddin disclosed this during the Basic Health Care Provision Fund webinar series. The NHIA official stated further that the Vulnerable Group Fund is expected to help provide health insurance for over 83 million vulnerable Nigerians, adding that it would assist in achieving universal health coverage for all Nigerians. Meanwhile, according to the World Health Organization, universal health coverage ensures that all persons have access to the health services they need when and where they need them without financial hardship. The World Health Authority has also pledged support for the implementation of the vulnerable group funds. In sports, determined to become the first race in Nigeria to have an elite men's field that will return a sub 2.10 minutes, the Abuja International Marathon AIM has confirmed the signing of four gold labeled runners, including two men and two women. This was disclosed by Abuja International Marathon Race Director Olukayade Thomas, who doubles as the race media and publicity, adding that the Chief Executive Officer of Uni Central Resources Management Limited, the licensee of AIM, Zuzana Ogumiloyo, who is also the race managing director, has signed the contract with the runners. He revealed that Andrew Bren Kimatai, with a personnel best or base, of 2.08 tops the list. Breaking news. News reaching now says the Uyo High Court has sentenced Udwak Frank Akman to death by hanging for the murder of a job seeker in newborn Umaran. While acquitting and discharging his father Frank Akman and sister Basi Awan. We'll bring you details 
more details of the court ruling in our subsequent news bulletins. Still in sports, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will take on former European champions Portugal in an international friendly in September. The three-time African champions were earlier scheduled to face the Juritus of Guinea-Bissau in a 2023 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers in September. But the doubleheader has been shifted to March 2023 by the Confederation of African Football, CAF. Reports say the NFF wants to take advantage of FIFA window and make sure the Super Eagles were kept busy following the postponement of the qualifiers. On entertainment news, veteran film star Cynthia Kerrick and Clemson Colonel have been freed by gunmen who abducted them on their way from a movie set on Friday in Enugu State. Spokesman of Actors Guild of Nigeria, Adrian Manalisa Chinda, confirmed this, noted that the news was spoken to them by the National President of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, Egeria Emeka Rollers. In the statement, the Asian President urged members to be security conscious on and off film sets and take precautionary measures. Reports say the veteran film stars were released on hot. Still in entertainment, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has declared Nigeria's popular Instagram celebrity Ismaila Mustafa, popularly known as Morpha, wanted. The anti graft agency, in a notice via its Twitter handle, urged anyone with useful information on the socialized whereabouts to contact the commission via shared phone numbers, email address, or visit the nearest police station. Recall that the EFCC had arraigned Morpha and his company for alleged fraud. The agency had accused the socialite and his company of a six billion naira fraud on January 12th. And that's all we have for you at this time. Do ensure to follow us on social media, all of which you can find on our website, spectrumtv.ng. If you have been watching Spectrum News at 12, I am Yanni. I can thanks for watching and do enjoy the rest of your day. Mm -hmm.